Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today, this afternoon, to remember and to honor the life of Samara Valdez, age 48, who passed away at her home in Crown Point on Sunday, March 12, 2023. She was born on October 21st, 1974, at Michigan City Memorial Hospital in Michigan City, Indiana, to Sam and Carolyn Muhammad, who survived. On September 1st, 2000, Samara married Vincent Valdez Jr. and later had two beautiful daughters, Ava Samara Valdez and Farron R. Valdez, all of whom are the love of her life, who also survived. She led a full life focused on family and loved ones. Samara grew up with her first fur baby, Fonzie, who was her same age and with her into her early 20s. She was an avid New Kids on the Block fan and spent her early years dreaming about meeting them at a concert in Chicago. Did that ever happen? It did? Okay. I was, I was reading that. I was wondering if it ever happened. So she started her corporate career in accounting and office management from her teen years until moving to Texas, where she began a career as the CEO of domestic engineering and education at home. Samra raised her family before moving back to Indiana, where she was an aspiring real estate agent and home decor aficionado and brought her elegant taste to everything she touched. She loved houses and always re-imaging re new decorating designs. She dedicated her life to ensuring her daughters had an amazing life as possible. She spent her free time researching and planning the next amazing family vacation spot. Samara was also survived by her siblings, Melissa and Desiree Muhammad, and a brother. She was preceded in death by her grandparents, Clifford and Isla Peterson, Minnie and Alec Muhammad, uncles John Peterson, Earl Fielding, Aunt Joanne McKee, and cousin Brett Fielding. Animals was a huge part of her life. She dedicated a lot of love and time to help animals in need, whether through rescuing, fostering, or donating time and money. She also kept a large household of loving fur babies and gave them the best life possible, prioritizing them above herself. Her love for animals will be remembered and continued through her family. Samara also uh, is preceded in death by her beloved fur babies, Fonzie, Sam, Aristotle, Dexter, Munchie, Tiger, Talia, Emily, Sebastian, Sylvester, Thumper, Dada, Sophia, <laughs> Sasha, Milo, and others. Yeah. <laughs> Some reflections about Samra. A true mother through and through, whether it be for friends or family, truly one of the most beautiful and caring souls you could ever come across. The light and joy she spread to all who knew her with will forever be living proof of her accomplishments and compassion. She was loving, caring, and she always wanted to make sure everyone was happy and cared for. She was full of life and loved everyone, and you, everyone, and you knew she was special and beautiful. She was very much loved by everyone that knew her. She was a beautiful, kind, caring, generous, very intelligent. She loved her family, all her children, all animals, the elderly, and life. She gave her whole heart to everyone and everything. She was an amazing aunt and a best friend whose inner light shined around everyone in her presence. She is one of those rare individuals that is not only nice to know, but truly an honor to know. Samara was such a bright, beautiful, and loving person and loved all her family very much and could talk for hours with anyone. Her cats were very special to her. To everyone that met her, Samara was a bright, shining light, a smiling face, a warm, genuine human being who spread kindness wherever she went. She was a devoted wife, a dotty mother, loving pet mom, committed rescuer, and fierce friend. The world needs more people like Sam, and now it's dimmer with her loss. The family wanted this to be a, a, a celebration of uh, Samra's life and, 
and what she what she did with her friends and with her family and so the family has asked that uh, there's some people who I think some people have some prepared remarks maybe some don't uh, but we wanted to just turn it over to those people to either stand or even come up here because we got our our uh, uh, feed here for the internet and just to say a few words and then we're going to turn it over to the immediate family and they're going to kind of close this section out and so who would like to be first uh, I know it's always the most difficult to be the first one but Good afternoon, I'm Vincent Valdez Sr. and my wife, Angie Valdez. We met Samara, I don't know what year it was, many years ago, and she had come with Vinny to meet the family and our daughters that were in Bible college at the time in the early 2000s, I'm gonna say. And we were just amazed at how beautiful and how caring and how special she was right off the bat. And Vinny said, what do you think? And I said, she's amazing and all I want you to be is happy. And that was fulfilled, especially because Samara was the center of the family. She took care of everything. She managed everything. Vinny went to work. And we didn't live near them for a long time, but I knew that she was the center of that family. And she took care of, Vinny didn't have to worry about anything but work. And his work is hard, takes a lot of uh, effort to do what he does, and he travels a lot. So we were so blessed to meet Samara and to take her in a doctor as our daughter we had five daughters and she made it six. She was so funny. And when you talk to her, she just, she lived, she lived life on purpose. And she was so excitable. And a lot of you know this. You could say, hey, you know, this aunt came in the house. An aunt came in the house? <laughs> you know, oh my goodness. What are you gonna do about it? And that was Samara. You know, she had, she was full of love. And that's, that's what God wants for us. God wants a relationship. God wants us to have love, the love that he has for each and every one of us. And she completed that mission in life by loving everyone. Loving Vinny and the girls and loving the, your neighbor. Your neighbor means not the people that live next door to you because sometimes you can't live next door to those people, but it's loving everybody. Loving everybody and giving your whole strength. And that's what God wants us to do is to love him first with all your strength, with all your heart and have a purpose in life. We're not just here by accident. She wasn't here by accident. She fulfilled her journey, as, as Paul says, you know, I finished the race, I fought a good fight, and she did. <clears throat> I can't tell you why she's gone or why she left so early. You'll have to ask God when you face him. We don't understand, but he has a plan and a purpose for all of us, and she fulfilled that plan. Some of the things that I've, I've thought about is so many memories of her, but I'll just share um, a couple of them. Is uh, when she'd come to Texas and we'd have Thanksgiving or whenever they could make it down. And uh, I'm a cook, I was a banquet cook, so there was a lot of food at our house. And I looked over at Samara's plate and her, you know, there was not gravy on top of it. 
it was hot sauce. <laughs> and you couldn't see the food because my wife would make, she loved my wife's hot sauce. And I go, oh my gosh, Samara, you got too much hot sauce. It would be a quart. I said, you want a straw for that or something? <laughs> she loved the hot sauce and she would let you know and she made it a point to be grateful for that hot sauce, you know? Um, that's just a couple of things, or one thing that, that, that really, you know, stands out is, is like, wow, this lady loves hot sauce, you know? <laughs> she was very beautiful, very special, and, and we, we, miss, we miss her very much, and we're gonna miss her, and I know all of you will too, and I just want you, the family, our, our family, our extended family up here, to just live your life on purpose like she did. Samara, I know you're hearing us. And I want to thank you for making my, my son so very happy. And for Ava and Sarah. You did so much for us. And I love you dearly, dearly, dearly. And I just want to say that you are the best, the best daughter-in-law ever. Yes, thank you. hard to see everybody here right now but she's such a testament of her love and just Sammy we did I think Biddy may tell the story later of how we met her but I was at a graduate it was a graduation at Bible school and he brings this beautiful model woman with the hugest smile across <laughs> here to ear and um you know she was so good with my younger sisters they were like little girls and um i just he's like what do you think what do you think what do you think everybody he's asking to the youngest sister what do you think what do you think? And i'm like man i have never seen him this excited about anything in his whole life and this is a guy who loved Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo games. <laughs> and like, that was his love, was like computers, anything, games. And now he's excited about this woman and um, she just had, she just exuded so much love and like, we were like, are I was like, pulled them aside. I'm like, Benny, are you sure she's not a robot? Did you build her? <laughs> she, she is perfect. And we, I just remember leaving there thinking, like, this is something special. I've mean, he had girlfriends, like, well, one or two girlfriends before, but um, never anybody like Sammy. She was like, she was so special. So, I mean, they got married, and um, I remember like her telling us. You know, she served as a big sister, and um, I never, I was the oldest girl, so I never had a sister, and uh, I remember telling her, like, wow, you're like my big sister now, and, um, you know, we probably butt heads as being two independent women, and um, came to reconcile that eventually across the years. I'm thankful because she was herself, and she got to be herself, and never apologized for it. Lots of love in her heart, and, um, when she got pregnant with Ava, she told us we were all in the house together and we, all the girls in a circle, we started jumping, holding hands and we're like, we're gonna be aunts, aunts, aunts. <laughs> and um, just this beautiful, you know, baby shower for her and just such, she's just, I just, I will always remember her smile, um, the biggest smile in the world, just so much love. Um, and then we, you know, because of the distance, and I ended up moving to California right after um, Ava was born, like right, like the week after. Um, she uh, she has so much style, 
and the clothing that she chose. And when Ava was a baby, they came out to San Diego and we visited. And it was so important to her that Ava matched. And <laughs> she was staying downtown at a hotel. And so we, you know, I'm like, I come meet her. And she's like, I'm not ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm texting her, I'm on the way. And she's like, I need a bow. I have a bow. It's pink, but it's not the shade of pink that matches the outfit. And so she <laughs> took a taxi to like a nearby store to get like the exact shade of pink. And I was like, man, she is like on it. She's like, what style for this baby? And um, yeah, I mean, just so many stories like that. Just beautiful. And um, especially like, we had more of a long distance relationship since I live in California and they moved out here, but we just on the phone, texting, and she never forgot when I became a mother, my beautiful girl, and always took care of her, sent her love, wanted a video chat, sent her all the love. Um, she was available all times of night for fur baby emergencies when we got our fur baby, and um, never forgot a birthday at Christmas, made sure all the kids, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this, but all the kids had toys, had something to brighten up their life, that they were remembered, felt special, um, made it a point to make everyone feel appreciated and important when she was around them. Um, I remember her talking about Michaela often and Gavin and others. Um, but I do have one kind of funny story. The last time we saw them in person was 2015. And we went, we ended up taking a trip to the, the safari park. It was a really beautiful butterfly exhibit. Um, we could go <laughs> in and the butterflies can land on you and you could put your hand out. And we had specific rules to observe, you know, the butterflies only live for three days. So they were always hatching them. And well, this, um, as she called it, irresponsible mother was also there <laughs> and was letting her kid roam around and the kid had stomped on a butterfly and um, was catching a butterfly and Samara went full-blown mama bear on this woman and there was curse words exchanged there was fighting words we actually ended up with security escorting us outside of the park <laughs> only because Mindy and Sammy thought that that those people were a little crazy and um, were that that upset but Samara was like Butterflies are life, and, um, you know, I mean, even though they had like a three day, she cared about them, they were like, meaningful to her, and, um, you know, I, I, that's how she treated every person that crossed her path as a butterfly, beautiful, special, even no matter how long she was in your path, and um, I do appreciate that, I, um, during COVID, we texted a lot, and, um, she was, you know, giving me a lot of motherly advice and she, you know, relayed about her, her choices to homeschool and how she felt so good about that because she was able to impart everything she wanted for the girls. And I um, remember her saying that, you know, Ava would never leave her side. Fair and she was saying that you were becoming more and more independent and she was happy about that, but she also worried a little bit about you. Um, but she knew you were gonna be okay. And um, I'll never forget you, Sammy. I miss you, love you so much. My beautiful older sister that I never would have had had they not met, been married. She loved us all wholly. And I just wanted to read this um, poem. This is by Henry J.M. Newen. Distance never separates two hearts that really care, for our memories span the miles, and in seconds we are there. But whenever I start feeling sad because I miss you, I remind myself how lucky I am to have someone so special to miss. We miss you, Sammy. Thank you. I have another. Um, my name is Jim Monamon. I'm from Crown Point, Indiana. 
Welcome home. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything today, but um, I really enjoyed the Valdez stories. And I wanted you to know that Sammy was one of us. She was a Mohammed. And there's about 250 just like him. <laughs> I kid you not. And, and I told my wife that my cousin Sam, Sam well, I, I was, that, that took me out of my field. I, I had no idea. I mean, I know we have problems, our whole family is, because we were a very, very large family. Um, depression people, uh, a family of 10, and we're double cousins to a family of nine. There's 19 before the boomers. And we've got about 300, 400 cousins. And if you live in Crown Point, and when I told my wife that my cousin Samara has passed away, and she was stunned. I mean, she's a baby, literally a baby to us. Um, and I said, she lives in Crown Point, and we thought we lived in Texas. Or, or I don't know, um, Elk Grove Village, who knows, in Illinois, where you may have lived. But either way, I just wanted to make sure that you know that we hopefully are going to have a family reunion with the Mohammeds and the Mowers and the, uh, all, but we want you to be there. I want these kids to know all of our cousins and they look just like you. <laughs> I swear to God. And that's the beauty of this thing. So realize that you have cousins and God bless you. God's with you. She will be on your shoulder for a long time. She's going to be the one saying, uh-uh, don't do that. She'll be whispering in your ear. That's what mothers do. But that's all I wanted to say. But I did want to say that we have a very, very large family that you're part of on this side. Open up to us and let us know who you are. And my name is Mohammed, M-O-H-A-M-E-D, James. I live on Glen Oaks Drive in, in Lakes of the Four Seasons. Wow. Call me. We have, uh, my wife's going to start the uh, the dinners. Come on over anytime. Jump in the pool. We have a above ground pool. I mean, we're not that wealthy, although we have parts of the family that is that wealthy, but that's not us. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Turner, well, one of you is my sisters. Um, you know, we talk about this time when we, we don't, no, we speak up for what Oh, sorry. Um, there are a lot of stories, um, you know, we could tell we had so many good memories. Samara was so wise and she was so beautiful and so special. Um, you know, I like to, I, I think about the birthday parties she threw for the girls and she went all out. I mean, she was amazing with her decorations and, you know, um, I had two children and, um, Sadie's 10 now, Brooks is downstairs, he's a year and a half and, you know, my husband's always like, what are you doing? Planning six months in advance, and I'd like to say I was inspired by Samara because <laughs> she just was incredible and just did so amazing with the birthday parties. But um, I remember her and Beanie always made me feel so special. Like I was the most awesome person in the whole world. Like she would just encourage me and you know, tell me I could do anything. And I remember like hearing her advice and this is a kind of funny one, you know, at first I wanted to go to this Bible school and I remember Samara, no, Nessa, don't go, don't go at first. And then I don't know why I had a National Guard recruit come talk to me about wanting to join. And I remember hearing Samara, Go to TBI, Nessa, go to TBI. <laughs> but she did. She was, you know, and I remember the girls holding y'all when y'all were born. And I told Beanie when they came to see Sadie and just never remembering how little y'all were. And so many memories. And I mean, 
guess I was like 12 when I met her and she was like one of my sisters. <laughs> she was so special and so many, so many beautiful things and her love for animals. And can I tell the one where the bird fell out of the tree? <laughs> so there was a baby bird and we were at my parents' house and it fell out of the tree and she was so worried and Beanie's like, I'm going to sell it to church. And she's like, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> he was joking. He was joking. <laughs> but yeah, she just loved everyone in life and it's so, so sad she's gone. She was such a beautiful person. I'm so grateful that I had and Beanie found each other. <laughs> I love you, Sarah. She was Joey to me, uh, second oldest nibbling. <laughs> um, I've never known Mohammed's to be shy, but I suppose that I'm okay with being first out the gate again. When I changed my name, she was the first in the family to know, um, because I knew that she would be an easy one to tell, that she would smile at me and be enthusiastic at me. And uh, a few years later, she told me that she hoped that if anything ever happened to her, then he that I would make sure that the kids felt like they could be whoever they wanted to be. And I think that the best thing I can do for her is to promise that I always will. You guys will leave here with my number <laughs> and you can call me anytime. I love you all very much. Why don't we turn it over to the immediate family and you, you have some uh, words, okay? Very special that they can come up and do this. So, so just one right after another, however you plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't promise you how this is gonna go, but I want to do this for my daughter. Explicit joy. Samara Jo Mohammed was born October 21st, 1974, at approximately 3:21 a.m. in my aching back. Very different from her siblings. She was long and thin, and she stayed long forever. I remember being worried because she didn't want to open her eyes. Tilt the microphone down. She didn't want to open her eyes because she was very sensitive to light. And she was the happiest when she was in a darker, more calm, soft light. When her grandparents came to meet her at the hospital, her paternal grandfather said, wow, you named her right. I didn't understand what he meant because I made up her name, Samara. And he said, in Arabi, that's the Samara, which means the dark one. And the funny thing was, she was the only one of my children that had dark brown hair, dark brown eyes, and olive complexion. Um, when she was like three weeks old, she developed a bunch of allergies, and but they put her in the hospital and come to find out she was allergic to smoke and milk-based formula. So we got those <coughs> taken care of. And needless to say, we became a smoke-free home. She went back to her happy little self. And it didn't make take much to keep a smile on her face. She loved people. She loved everyone. And she had her favorites. Her favorite babysitter was the neighbor, Kathy. And she'd want Kathy to come over just to play, not to babysit. <laughs> One day when Kathy came over to babysit and I was getting ready to leave, she very sweetly and innocently said, wait, Bobby, wait. Before you go, will you get Johnny Gage on the TV so he can play with us? <laughs> Johnny Gage was an LA Fire Department paramedic. 
that she just loved. That the show was amazing, <coughs> and he was her hero. And I had to explain to her why I, I couldn't get him out the TV for her. Uh, and that was heartbreaking. <coughs> She, as everyone knows, loved all animals, especially Siamese cats. And everyone knows she had a cat named Fonzie <coughs> that lived with her his whole life. And um, she treated him like a baby. She'd dress him up in clothes and he'd love her. And she'd push him around in her baby stroller or in the wagon. He'd jump out, <coughs> pick him up, and put him right back in, and go some more. Um, her friendliness was her magnet. She was the friendliest, kindest person you could ever meet. Um, her personal socializing started back in kindergarten, where she met many wonderful friends and had those friends all the way, all nine years through Queen of All Saints. And she was able to reconnect with some of them when she moved back to Indiana. And three of those really close friends came to her bedside last Saturday, the day before she passed, to show their love and say their goodbyes. Oh, we are sincerely grateful to you for that. We thank you so much, Marcy, Jennifer, and Karen. Thank you. And we know that she couldn't respond to anything we said, or, but the nurse told us that she could hear us and that she knew we were there. And that's what mattered. Um, as a student, most of her years, she was straight A's. Even though she was a hard worker, she worked from the time she was 14 because she wanted to do things. She wanted to have fun, but she didn't want me to be financially strained because of it. Because of it. So she worked, and I think 90% of her money went to New Kids on the Block concert tickets. <laughs> where they would sit out the night before the tickets were going on sale, and all night long, sometimes in very cold weather. And I'd come in the middle of the night and bring hot chocolate and cookies or whatever, and they'd all be tickled and happy to be there with her cousins and her friends. And they made a night of it, but they really enjoyed it. In high school, she excelled in uh, English and um, writing, and she was really good at it. If this occasion weren't for her, she'd have been the one I'd have been calling to ask for help to write it. And she was my editor. I know she was Benny's editor. And I'm so sorry, girl, that she won't be able to be your editor for your school communications and, and others as well. And I'm so sorry that she, she's going to miss all those milestones because that's all she used to talk about was the milestones that she would have with you guys. They were her whole life. I mean, she loved everyone, but I knew you guys were her soul, and I know you're going to miss her, but that's mama. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my spot. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, she and her sister Desi went to almost <laughs> every concert, every New Kids concert within 125 miles. And she went a little bit further than that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she did get to meet, her well, all of them, but she did get to meet Jordan, her favorite new Got kid. to have dinner with. <laughs> yes. Um, and they got to know their bodyguards very well. <laughs> don't, know what, don't know if that was, and, and the one was this, Huge, huge guy, all all muscle. And what was Sean. It? Sean. And the, the girls would show up at a concert, and Sean would be like, "Hey, girls, are you? What's going on?" Um, as an adult, she always did amazing things for her nieces and nephews, and 
they all have such wonderful memories of her. Um, Max's favorite memory is baking Syrian cookies with us all day long. And we had them all, just like said though, the whole counter was full of cookies. I'm sure she had more fun eating them than just watching that. But, um, and Michaela said there's so many wonderful memories that she just can't name one. Um, oh gosh, she um, took her, her loved ones everywhere. I mean, if there was a fun place to go, she took them, they were there. They had marvelous times, marvelous childhood because of things she would do for them. Um, let's see. Yeah, even when they were in California, she took a niece and nephew to Disneyland. Who does that? But she was always looking to make the kids feel special. Um, she was not just the cat whisperer. She was everyone's her healer. When anyone was in pain or had a crisis, she was there with her shoulder to cry on, her arms open wide to all who needed her. And there's so many more friends that she's made in the course of her life. When she started volunteering for Abra, she met a new friend, Amy. And when she called me to tell me about her new venture, she said Amy was the twin that she never knew she had because she had so many of the same passions that she did. And she even liked new kids on the block. <laughs> and they even went to a concert together. Um, when they were in Texas, her special place was to take the girls to this sugar girls and all the festivals. We got to ride the ponies and trains and all those wonderful things. When we got to Indiana, it was Bellaboos, the orchards and Fair Oaks Farms. And I'll never forget the one time we went to Fair Oaks Farms. They had, if anyone doesn't know it, a huge bounce yeah, pillow, mattress, whatever it was. We all got on it at the same time. And Vinny would make a great big jump and we all flew up in the air. <laughs> I never laughed so hard, I don't think in my whole life, in so long. We just had the best time. And I think there's a video of it somewhere, Vinny, but I don't know where. Um, when Sammy and I had the spare quiet time, when you girls fell asleep, I know Baron is not your favorite anymore, but we watched chick flicks and we loved them and just talk and talk. Um, her friendship was just unimaginable. Um, one of our longtime friends, Marcy, the other day was telling us about a, um, a TV series that she saw in the beginning of this series, friendship, the way it started, Marcy said, reminded her so much of the way she and Sandy started. It was such a sweet compliment. Um, I just really appreciated that. Um, she was truly a beautiful person, both inside and out. And her loving kindness extended to strangers as well. She would have the clerk that was taking care of her pay for the person behind her, sometimes the person in front of her, whether it was in a, a grocery store or, or a drive through <laughs> This one little elderly man followed her over after he found out what she did to the packing table at an Aldi store. And he told her that you know, she didn't have to, he wanted to pay her what he had and she said, no, it was my pleasure. Just do something special for someone. Of course, she was truly beautiful, both inside and out. She loved and helped all that she possibly could have in her much too short life. My baby girl, I love you so much and I miss you. You made the world a much better place. Thank you for being mine.
much time, so it's not very long, but here's something I wrote. <laughs> Nothing I can say will do her justice. She's such a beautiful human being. She was so kind, generous, loving, funny. She had amazing taste and gift giving abilities. She always gave you her undivided attention whenever you talked to her and she made you feel like you really mattered. She was always so proud of us and so obviously content with the life the four of us built. I couldn't have asked for a more awesome mommy. I had the most magical childhood. She spoiled us with copious amounts of toys, once in a lifetime experiences, <laughs> and her unique, undying, unconditional, infinite love. She wouldn't withhold information from me. She was always enabling us learning new things and teaching important life lessons. My mama was the best mother she could possibly be. She dedicated herself to her daughters and always put us first. She has given us truly amazing lives and I will forever be grateful for everything she did for us. Thank you everyone for coming. I just wanted to share a few stories with you guys. Um, if you don't know, I'm Vincent Vinny. Uh, I met her and um, Darla already told you the story of where uh, they literally asked if, if, if I built her, if she was a robot. It was <laughs> so funny, but it was so accurate because she's just so perfect, you know. Uh, <coughs> Really just didn't know how someone like me could, could get so lucky and meet her. She was just unbelievable. Just like my dad said, she she ran our lives. She did everything. You know, I, I went to work and she worried about everything else. And um, you know, it's been hard um, with her in the hospital the last few months, those who didn't know. But um, we've we've already started that that life and, and one of her biggest fears um, was her leaving and the three of us trying to get along without her and, and trying to make it without her. And I think um, one of the joys that she was able to see is, is that we actually did. We, we, we've stepped up, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, we, we figured out how to get along and, and how to run the house without her because we've had to. She's been in the hospital and, and we've been trying to make things work without her. And it, she was very surprised, very happily surprised that, that we weren't at each other's throats, you know, killing each other. <laughs> and, and it was something she didn't have to worry about, you know. She was trying to get better. She was trying to fight this cancer. And, and here we were trying to make things work. And um, I think we're, we're going to do everything we possibly can to make her proud and, and show her that we really are a family. Um, and, we, and we're going to make things work without her. We have to. And today was a good example. We were getting ready to get to come here and it really struck me that she was really the one who organized things and kept things running. And, you know, I couldn't find my shoes. I had to get my sisters to go run and buy a new pair because we couldn't find the second one. We were literally crawling on the floor, looking everywhere and she would know exactly where both pairs were, you know, where everything was, that's just how she was. So, um, I did want to share a couple of stories, things that, that hopefully um, some of you guys may remember. Something called MySpace, <laughs> long, long ago. I actually posted this story, and I just want to reshare it with you guys. But uh, it, it's kind of the differences in, in shopping, as an example. You know, um, when you shop with her, many of you may have have had that that opportunity. But we were at a grocery store, and just as an example. You know, when she's ready to look for something, let's say it's bread or whatever it is, she's not going to walk over and buy bread. She's going to think about it. She's going to find not just the best brand, but once she, she you know, it's not just about the money. It, it, you know, she wants to find the best deal and that sort of stuff. But it's really more about what looks the prettiest. <laughs> but when she finally decides on the brand she's going to use, then, she, then she's going to settle down. It's not going to be the first package. It's not going to be the one that's facing the public. It's going to be the one behind it, first of all. 
it's going to take her a while to decide wh which is the best one to take home. And it's just how she does everything. And if you compare that to me, you know, I'm going to literally get on the cart and probably ride it down the aisle and punch the first bread I see. <laughs> the first one that falls in the cart is the one I'm going home with, you know. And it's just everything was was very special to her. And, and it, 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 you know, just kind of how she was. I remember one time um, for Christmas, um, she had the girls in the room and I was working very late on a Christmas Eve and um, Santa showed up that night and I'll, I'll never forget uh, how special that was because her and the girls were falling asleep waiting for him to show up. And I remember they woke up and they heard some noise downstairs and I'll never forget her telling the girls, Santa's here. And she got lost in the moment. It was so magical for her because she had kind of fallen asleep and forgot. And I'll never forget, the girls actually said, go get daddy, he's in his office. And um, there wasn't enough time though. So it was just the three of them. But um, it, 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 was, it was very magical. And I, I think um, they, they probably have a, a better idea of the story, but, but um, it, was, it was something I'll never ever forget because she, she loved Christmas. Those of you who know her and knew how much she loved Christmas. We have tons of pictures of her decorating and doing inflatables and all that sort of stuff that we're going to continue that on for her. But um, she loved houses too. We mentioned that in her obituary. Uh, when we were first looking for houses, we spent so much time just looking and looking. And I'll never forget, Fair and famously told us one time when we were going to go look house hunting. So we're just going to take our Saturday and throw it in the trash again. <laughs> 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 but that's what she loved doing. She loved getting the best deal and getting the best house. And so, for those of you who don't know the story of Michigan, I wanted to share that with everyone just just briefly. But she, you know, she loved animals. Everybody keeps mentioning that. Uh, one of the things she used to do was turn the water on for the cats. So they loved kitchen sink or the bathroom sink, and they they jump up there and they meow at her and they yell at her until she turned the water on. And so she'd do that pretty regularly. And she'd go and walk over, turn the water on for the cats, and they'd drink and do whatever they roll around in it. Well, when we um, first bought this, this house in Michigan, uh, it was really kind of settling because we we're just tired of looking. <laughs> we finally got this house. It was beautiful. We got a good deal. It was um, a, a, a woman who had lost her husband, and so she was just giving up the house. So we got it at a really good, good price. Um, but this was when she was first diagnosed. Those who may not know, um, she came back to Indiana to, to, to get her, her um, mammograms and different testing. And it was when she first got the news that, that she was diagnosed. And so I was in Michigan taking care of all the animals. So I drove back three hours to be with her to, to kind of get the, the results. And, and this is the first time she, that, that we learned this. It was about two years ago. Um, so I was back home in Indiana with her and um, we were talking about the news and just dealing with the moment and, sh and sharing and crying. And um, so we went to sleep, just to kind of get ready for the new life. And um, I went to sleep and I, I, I don't know, I've been asleep about 15 minutes. She decided to check on the cats because she loved to use cameras and especially as, as we roamed around. So she uh, checked in on them and heard running water. <laughs> Um, she woke me up and said, I think something's wrong with the house. You got to go back. So I drove three hours and I, I she was right. I uh, got to our new house, opened the door and it was just flooded with water. What happened was the cats were used to the water she used to turn on for them. So they went and turned it on and it overflowed and flooded our brand new house. <laughs> so we spent, we've spent the last two years working with insurance and, um, remediating that house and repairing it and moving the cats out of there and bringing them back to Indiana um, through her and also dealing with her cancer. And, and her biggest worry was that she didn't want to leave and leave us dealing with this house. And so her last, but before she stopped walking, her last moments were selling this house. <laughs> and um, that, that was the last, her, her last action that she did really is she sold the house and then this thing hit her really bad. And I think it was her, I think she was holding on and just waiting to get this done. 
because as soon as she sold it is when everything went downhill. And um, she, she was able to not leave us with that house. That was the, one of the main things she was trying to get accomplished in her life. The last cohesive thing she told us was when she got um, home, um, the ambulance brought her home, she said, don't forget to tip the guys. <laughs> <laughs> the last, last real conscious thing that she wanted to make sure happened is that somebody else got a tip. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for coming and, and spending your time with us. It's, it's been very, very difficult, but with everyone's love, it, it, it's made it just a little bit easier. So thank you, everyone. She is um, something that you're never going to forget. She is extremely special. I've never met anyone like her in my life, and I think a lot of us can probably say the same thing. So thank you, Sammy, for everything you've done for us. It's going to be very hard to move on without her, but we're going to try our best. Thank you. you. Appreciate the perspective from the family so much. We're going to close in just kind of a, a prayer benediction. It was interesting. You know, I was thinking about all the stories that I've heard today and the ones that I've heard in the last couple of days prior. And I just thought of something. And It's an interesting question because maybe some of you are asking this question and, and it's, it's what, the question is this, what pleases God? And I thought about that when I was thinking about all the stories and stuff they were saying. <laughs> when God looks down at man, what pleases God? And then I started thinking about uh, Samra and I started thinking about all the people that she took care of. <clears throat> took care of two beautiful daughters that are here. All the... Uh, nieces or their nephews or you know all the extended family and and just making sure that they got things that they wouldn't get if it wasn't for her you know think about it said that she liked uh, helping the elderly things that they would have if it wasn't for her taking care of the fur babies working in rescue these innocent helpless fur babies that needed help, that needed attention, that needed rescued, even rescuing a butterfly that lasts for three days. It takes a special person, doesn't it? it takes a special skill set to help out people and animals that in reality can't help themselves. Then I was reminded of the question, what pleases God? And Matthew says this, it says, truly I tell you, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. What does God please with? When we take care of the least of these. When we take care of that animal that needs rescuing. When we take care of that elderly person that needs help. When we take care of that family member, that loved one, when we sacrifice for them, for the, the children, we sacrifice for them. God says, you take care of them, you do to me. So as I was thinking about, about her, that was kind of a thought that ran into my mind. So in her life, Many people sometimes have the wrong thought about what God is and what religion is, but she cared for the least of these. She cared for those that needed help. She cared for the least of these, and that's what God wants of us. God said, you're never more like me when you're helping the least, when you're helping those that can't help themselves, and that's, that's her. That's the story of her life, and it's also the story about what pleases God, to do what she did. Let's just close in prayer. Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you care for us. We thank you for the many people that are here 
and the love and the care that they have for this dear family, the love and the care that they have for Samara. And Father, we are just so thankful for the time that we were able to spend here today and just in remembering a time that we could remember the life that she lived and the life that you gave to her to bless us with and for the many people and the many hearts that she touched for the many animals and pets that she changed their lives father we are so grateful and father we pray that in the next days and weeks and months to come that you would be with everyone that is here that you'd be with the dear family that they would sense a strength that they would sense a a a grace that you and only you can give father we lift them up into your precious hands where it is safe father we are thankful today and we are grateful for blessing everyone that is here today with her life with her love with her grace with her help in jesus name we pray Thank you, Pastor Jamie, for your words, and thank you to all who came up and shared stories. Um, also, I want to just thank everyone for coming and showing their love and support for Vinny and the girls. This does conclude our service at this time, and we will start dismissing from the back of the chapel to pay your final respects. Um, thank you again for being here.